diverticulitis, or colonic diverticulitis, is an inflammatory gastrointestinal disease. It involves inflammation of abnormal pouches, diverticula, in the wall of the large intestine. Diverticula are more common in the sigmoid colon, left side, in Western populations, but are more likely to occur on the right side, ascending colon, in Asia and Africa. This difference in location may be related to dietary and lifestyle factors. Diverticulosis, the presence of diverticula without inflammation, affects a significant portion of the population, especially as they age. About 35% of people in the Western world have diverticulosis. Although many people have diverticulosis, only a portion will develop diverticulitis. Estimates suggest that 4 to 15% of those with diverticulosis will go on to develop diverticulitis. Diverticulitis is more common as people get older. Its prevalence increases from 5% in those under 40 to 50% in those over 60 years old. Pathophysiology The exact causes of diverticulitis are not fully understood. Several factors are thought to interact, including genetics, diet, gut bacteria, and changes in the structure and function of the colon. Diverticula may form due to high pressure inside the colon. This pressure might be caused by strong, abnormal contractions of the colon wall. Inflammation in diverticulitis is often attributed to bacterial infection. This happens when bacteria get trapped within a diverticulum. There is a distinction between right-sided and left-sided diverticula based on their structure. Right-sided diverticula are microhernias involving all layers of the colon wall, while left-sided diverticula are pseudo-diverticula because they don't herniate through all layers. Genetic factors play a significant role in the development of diverticulitis. Studies estimate that about 50% of the risk can be attributed to genetics. Clinical Manifestations The primary symptom of diverticulitis is acute abdominal pain. This pain is typically felt on the left side in Western populations, but on the right side in Asian populations. Other common symptoms include fever, nausea, diarrhea or constipation, and blood in the stool. Fever and blood in the stool are concerning findings that suggest a complication. Diverticulitis can cause a variety of complications if the inflammation spreads or the intestinal wall ruptures. Complications include abscesses, peritonitis, fistulas, bowel obstructions, bleeding, and strictures. Blood tests in diverticulitis often show elevated inflammatory markers, such as C-reactive protein and white blood cell count. These markers indicate an active inflammatory process in the body. Despite the common belief that constipation is a symptom, diverticulosis is actually associated with more frequent bowel movements. This finding challenges the traditional view of the condition. Management Treatment for diverticulitis depends on the severity of the condition. Uncomplicated cases may only require fluids and rest, while complicated cases often necessitate medication and potentially surgery. Antibiotics are not always necessary for uncomplicated diverticulitis, especially in mild cases without systemic inflammation. Recent guidelines suggest that supportive care is often sufficient. Severe diverticulitis may require hospitalization, intravenous antibiotics, and complete bowel rest. These measures help control the infection and allow the colon to heal. Surgery is often necessary for complications such as abscesses, fistulas, bowel perforation, or peritonitis. Surgical intervention aims to drain the infection, repair, or remove the affected part of the colon and prevent further complications. The choice of surgical approach, open or laparoscopic, depends on factors like the severity of the condition and the surgeon's expertise. Laparoscopic surgery is generally preferred as it is less invasive and allows for faster recovery. In cases where immediate bowel resection is too risky, a colostomy might be necessary. This procedure diverts stool flow away from the inflamed area to allow for healing. Prognosis most people with uncomplicated diverticulitis recover well with medical treatment. The median recovery time is around two weeks. However, recurrence is common, 
with about one-third of people experiencing another episode of diverticulitis. Recurrences are more likely in younger individuals, those who had an abscess, and those who experienced a complicated episode. About 5% of individuals with diverticular disease will develop complications within 10 to 30 years. The risk is highest during the first episode and decreases with each recurrence. The criteria for recommending surgery for diverticulitis are complex and continue to evolve. Decisions are made on a case-by-case -case basis, considering factors like the frequency and severity of attacks, the presence of complications, and the individual's overall health. Even after surgery, some individuals may continue to experience symptoms related to diverticulitis. About 25% of people report persistent symptoms following surgical intervention. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.